All right, hello internet. I am today wanting to talk about my idea for the ending of A Song of Ice and Fire. I'm making this video for myself because I need to be satisfied, I need closure, and let's get into it. A lot of the stuff I talk about in this video are going to be based off of the ideas presented in the channel Alt Shift X. Uh, they do a lot of compiling of theories, summaries, and I spent some time recently binging that channel. Specifically some of the Duncan Egg and the Summer Hall videos. And actually the Summer Hall, the tragedy of Summer Hall video really inspired me to make this ending. So I'll jump right in. I think that my favorite thing and a lot of people's favorite thing about Game of Thrones is that it is a tragedy at its core. The characters that we love go through tragedies and it just makes it, I don't know, why do we like tragedy? It's the drama, it's the heartache, it's the connection we feel to the characters and the things that they're going through. So. The ending of Game of Thrones as a show, as a series, needs to be tragic. Just absolutely tragic. Romantically tragic, politically tragic, all of it. So the main characters that I'm going to cover in my ending are Jon, Danny, and Tyrion. I don't really have an ending for all the characters, a comprehensive ending, even for these three, but this is really just tragic shit I want to happen to these characters. So, I'll start off with the first and most important thing is that John and Danny's relationship needs to have a lot of chemistry. They need to be set up, they, I think they were set up to have a lot of chemistry, but it all kind of just fizzled out in the show, of course. Their love is what's going to make so much of what happens to Danny and John at the end so tragic. Now, I do think the show technically hit a lot of the main plot points that are going to happen in the ending of the books. For instance, I'm pretty sure the burning of King's Landing by Danny will happen and the killing of Danny by John will also happen. Um, of course, the battle for Winterfell I think will happen, but I think it'll be completely different, and I'll cover that in a second. But with John and Danny, their romance needs to be, we need to spend a lot of time with them um, and be really invested in their relationship. And I think one way that this can happen is maybe even at first, they don't necessarily have a lot of feelings for each other, but politically they decide to unite their forces after John is declared king in the North. And so Danny comes along and they realize that the Night King is a threat, that Cersei's a threat, they need to get married and unite their forces. I think there'll still be some upset basically about this that John's sort of like bending the knee to her but so be it. Um, everyone's always pissed off at the king. All right their romance there's a key point in their romance that will become important later and it's when they're having sex. I don't know if it'll be the first time or just it needs to be a really erotic sex scene and at the end of it, Danny yells out, pierce me, Jon Snow, pierce me with your dick. Um, something like that, it, it, along those lines. And it's you know raw and visceral and we just, we're loving it. We're accepting the incest because that's Game of Thrones for you. Um, and so they are getting ready for the battle at Winterfell against the Night King. They've amassed their forces. 
they're waiting it out and the battle happens and they attempt to kill the Night King. This does not work. They lose most of their forces and they do not defeat the Night King. This is important because it just adds to the tragedy and the tension. We need to experience winter in these book series. The Stark has been saying it since forever, winter is coming. And at least one of these books needs to be about winter. The Winds of Winter is coming out, and I guess A Dream of Spring is after that, which I'm not going to speculate on when those are coming out or how they'll be set up, but we really do need to experience the weight of winter. One important thing is that Winterfell does not get... I don't think that the Night King should necessarily take Winterfell because there is that adage that Winterfell will never fall unless there's a Stark there. And at that point, we should have Bran, maybe I believe Bran, Arya, Sansa, and Jon all together in Winterfell. So at least the walls don't fall, but a majority of their forces will die so much so that they need to hole up and they can't leave except for the fact that Danny and John now have a dragon at this point I think if Bran is there some something big that I would like to happen is Bran helping people specifically John and Danny to realize that they have the ability to warg into their dragons I believe all the Starks really have this ability um, as far as Arya having the dreams about Nymeria and I don't know that Sansa really had dreams because Lady died so early on but you know I think it's possible for Sansa to do it too. But this is important because Jon needs to feel this connection with the dragon Rhaegal and really take Rhaegal on as his own. At this point, Danny is also learning a lot about prophecy, and this is something that Alt Shift X talks about: is that the Targaryens at some point start to become obsessed with prophecy. Rhaegar, Rhaegar was obsessed with prophecy. All these other Targaryens were obsessed, and I think that this is sort of the turning point with Danny: is that she's finally in Westeros, and she's finally starting to fulfill. A lot of these prophecies and so she becomes really invested in it and she knows that there needs to be three heads of the dragon which is why she's okay with John sort of taking the helm of Rhaegal. I do think also Tyrion will be there as well you know Alch Effect has a great video on Tyrion really what Tyrion becomes in the books is someone who's bitter and ready for revenge and so I personally subscribe to the theory that Tyrion is one of the Targaryens um he's the son of I think I can't remember her name but the Lannister that's married to T Tywin and the Mad King. So based on that theory, at some point, I think that he should also have a dragon. Maybe that's a little fanciful, but you know, I'm trying to tie shit up here. So the three of them are invested in the dragons, Jon with Rhaegal, Danny with Drogon, and Tyrion with Viserion. All right, so They're all holed up in Winterfell. The Night King marches south towards King Landing. The big three, Jon, Danny, and Tyrion, decide at some point to fly south with their dragons and try to defeat the Night King once again as he's sort of taking over the south. This, I, I, I'm not going to go over the exact details. I'm sure someone on Reddit has already worked this out, but 
at this point, because the Night King is about to take King's Landing and it means so much to Danny to rule the Iron Throne, she decides to burn King's Landing while the Night King's forces are in it, believing at this point that she is Azor Ahai and that she is meant to destroy the Night King. So she burns King Landing in the belief that this will defeat him. Tyrion is also willing to help her in this because he has been wanting to burn King's Landing down ever since the end of book four when he escaped and just like hates everybody. John is the one that didn't want to do this and he when the moment that this happens the burning of King's Landing he really truly feels betrayed by his lover their love and their working together has been built up long enough that even he may have been invested in some of the prophecy of the three-headed dragon but he is one that would be clearly against it he flies at this point he will fly back to winterfell to hole up with his people and just ride winter out The burning of King's Landing also does not defeat the Night King. Danny has burned the whole city for essentially no reason. And so in her defeat, she flies back to Dragonstone. Tyrion is more like, he's not, I wouldn't say that he's so much invested. I mean, at that point, Tyrion's just on a warpath, really. So I think that he would fly to Casterly Rock, burn all their shit down, and just live there with his dragon riding out winter. The Night King, for a long time, maybe years, just starts, you know, taking over with his long night he's he's marching he's sailing he's doing all this stuff people are dying none of the the whole westeros falls because there's no infrastructure they've already they've already burned all their crops in the war right before winter and everything's just falling apart so danny spent some years in dragonstone they all spend years separated maybe even learning better how to warg Maybe this is actually even when they learn how to warg into their dragons because they've just got enough time to sit around and they are the only ones with really power to do anything because they have dragons that can keep everybody warm in a sense that's around them. So in all this time that Danny is waiting and learning and kind of regretting the things that she's done for herself even before the long night to fulfill prophecy and realizing what it costs to try to get the Iron Throne and she didn't even get it. She does a lot of thinking, and she st but she's still thinking about prophecy and still mulling it over and still realizing all these patterns and how it's going to be fulfilled. She comes up with a plan. She calls together the three dragons and she tells them their plan. What they need to do is go to the Iron Throne, warg into their dragons and melt it down. With that melted metal, they create the first Valerian steel sword in thousands of years, Lightbringer. Lightbringer will be empowered by all the swords that have created the Iron Throne and all the power of the Targaryens who have sat upon the Iron Throne. Maybe even Gendry is the one that forges it since he does sort of have a drop of Targaryen blood. Um, I can't, I can't decide. I mean, it would be great if Gendry was there to forge it. What, I, what I'm basing all of this off is the old 
myth of Azor Ahai, who forges Lightbringer, the previous Lightbringer himself. So in some senses, I am sort of going with the idea that Jon Snow is Azor Ahai. In reality, really all three of them sort of are Azor Ahai, but Jon is going to be the one to wield Lightbringer. And so I can't decide, it's like, should it be Jon that forges a sword? But he's not a smith, so we'll have Gendry there. As they are forging it, they make three attempts at, um, what is it, Do you, when, you, when you douse the sword? And this is from the myth, Azor Ahai. The first attempt is water. The second attempt is the heart of a lion. And the third attempt is Azor Ahai's lover, Nissa Nissa. So they forge the sword. The first attempt, they try to douse it in water or ice. It goes brittle and breaks. The second attempt is possibly a sort of redemption arc for Tyrion as well. Maybe he's also been sitting in an empty casterly rock, having burned everything and realizing, you know, what was it all for? Um, why did I want to do this? Why did I even want casterly rock? And he's the lion, so he offers himself as the sacrifice of piercing one's heart and trying to forge the sword but it goes brittle again he's the lion he and truly Tyrion is a Lannister because his mother was a Lannister everyone says that you know he's Tywin's true son and in a sense that is right because Tywin raised him and he has the blood to back it up even though he's technically the Mad King's son even so, his sacrifice doesn't exactly work. It's, it's part of the prophecy, so of course it does work, but a third sacrifice needs to be made. And at this point, Danny realizes this. She realizes that all the prophecy that she's been obsessed with is coming to a head. And she sits in front of Jon Snow as they're forging it for the third attempt, and she says, Pierce me, Jon Snow. Jon Snow doesn't want to do it, but this is Danny's true redemption for all of the blindness that she had in being obsessed with prophecy, for Burning King's Landing, for all the mistakes she's made. It becomes her choice to sacrifice herself. And this is so important as a resolution for the character because we've been with her for so long. It's just, it needs to be all of her culmination of her actions and all of her knowledge and understanding is come to a point in this moment where she willingly gives herself up because she knows what needs to be done whereas Jon Snow doesn't necessarily want to do it that's the beauty and the tragedy of all of it is that she thinks that her life was supposed to be one way and she tried so hard and she realized Prophecy is never really what you think it's going to be, just like all the other Targaryens failed in, un in to understand the prophecies that they were part of. Jon Snow takes the sword and runs it through Daenerys' heart, and this blood and this love is what is enough to forge the new Valerian steel sword, Lightbringer, that will be used to destroy the Night King. Now, some kind of final battle will ensue and take place. Um, one thing I'm not really covering is in the show that the Night King was able to take one of the dragons and resurrect it as one of his. Now, I do think that could probably happen. I don't really know how, and I can't really figure out a way to make it satisfying, so whatever. In my version, that's not happening. In the final battle between the Night King and Jon Snow, Bran has realized that he must warg into the Night King 
to, I, you know, I've read this theory that like Bran kind of realizes he's the Night King because he can travel through time um, to some degree. And I don't know the full details of it, but I essentially think it's tragic enough that it's definitely going to happen. Like this is, everything that happens is all about tragedy. And in the end, really what happens to Jon Snow is that he is Azor High, and all of his family's dead. He lives, but like, it's tragic because he's alone. He's fulfilled this prophecy and brought on spring. So what happens is that Bran realizes he must warg in to the Night King for a moment, and this is the only way that Jon can actually defeat him with Lightbringer, which I think basically would also kill Bran, uh, because, because, because I say so, because it's tragic. The long night is ended, Jon Snow is left, he probably does go to spend the rest of his days up at the wall and maybe the wall is melted or just you know he's just gonna go and lose himself in the far north um all our characters are dead one note i'd i don't know how this would fit in but basically Arya is not dead but she's become you know a faceless man and so she's completely unrecognizable um, I'm pretty sure there's a theory about her trying to kill Danny, having a contract on Danny, which could add some real tragedy, but anyway, at the end what you have is the fulfillment of the prophecy, the three heads of the dragon, used to create Lightbringer and bring down the Night King by sacrificing themselves to make the sword, and John being the sword wielder in a sense, being Lightbringer himself. All three of them are Azor Ahai. That's important. It's, that's why there's so much confusion around, especially around John and Danny, is who, which one is it? And it's both. It's three of them. The, the dragon must always have three heads because that number is important to the fulfillment of the prophecy. And even in the battles that I've set up, um, losing to the Night King at Winterfell, losing to the Night King at King's Landing, and then I'm not sure where the final battle would take place, but um, the third battle is the one that ends the Night King. And in a sense, you know, Winterfell is ice, it's water. The water that they use creates the brittle sword. King's Landing because it's ruled by, it was once, at the end of it, uh, the last person to rule was a Lannister, Cersei, is the lion that is used to forge the sword and it doesn't work. And then the last one, I'd say the last battle needs to be someplace significant that we feel connected to as an audience it needs to be the lover in a sense um perhaps that's dragonstone um what's another you know perhaps it's as far south as dorne somewhere warm um i don't really have a guess to that but those are my ideas i really i i don't know if we'll ever get the books you know <laughs> I don't, and at this point, sometimes I even find myself thinking, like, George R. R. Martin shouldn't even finish the books because the fans can be so ravenous for, the fans treat George R. R. Martin like he's some kind of work mule for their satisfaction, and so when I came into the making of this video, it's really like, well, how would I feel with a good ending of Game of Thrones. How would I want it to end? It has to be tragic. Everyone has to be dead. All the characters, all the characters that we came to know are truly fulfilling the prophecy of the entire series. And the entire series is tragic. So those are my thoughts. 
Thanks for watching and Happy New Year.